to order. Um, just to let you know, this is probably the first time we have a, a board member that's on the telephone. So if you want to identify yourself, board member, on the phone. Hello, it's Michael. How's everyone? Sorry I can't be there, but thank you for accommodating me by speaking. <laughs> yeah, so, so it's going to be somewhat difficult because um, you know, we do, and we have a small group here, Michael, I'll tell you who's, maybe we'll just go around the table and introduce ourselves um, because we do have some people here for public comment. Um, so we'll, we'll make sure that we try to listen if you have any comment to any of the discussion that's taking place. We do not have a forum now. Um, we have Kevin Kaiser, Sturdy Company, Michael, you've never looked better. <laughs> Thank you, Evan. Likewise. <laughs> Chad Lewis Klein Financial. Hi, Michael. Hi, Michael. It's Elizabeth Van Green. Uh, Joseph Mariani. With the bid. Mark Edgeveria of Moose Off Frank Grill. John Tronson with the Four Partners. Matthew Severson with the bid. Jimmy Gallo with the bid. Devin Strecker with the bid. Jan Martin with the AMDA. Mark Stevenson, Hollywood United this Church. Three more since 85 degrees here, Michael. Oh, uh, I wish I could be there. Okay, here. Mike Harkins, Hollywood Island. Jimmy Shaw from the Video Grill. Um, so we're just going to wait and we're going to actually maybe open up for public comments so we don't have a forum for any of the action. So, Jimmy, I know you have a lot of I do. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, over here? Okay, hi. I'm Jimmy Shaw. Some of you know me, some of you don't. I own a Loteria Grill, a restaurant in Hollywood in Cherokee. And I, I, I'm very invested in Hollywood. Um, I opened up my restaurant five years ago. Six, oh, no, seven years ago now. Flies by. For two main reasons. Hollywood is the most densely packed neighborhood of residents in LA. That was reason number one. Reason number two, my landlord, CIM. History of revitalizing neighborhoods. Um, I thought I was gambling on a great neighborhood and I was going to end up on one of the Grand Avenues of the street. The fact of the matter is Hollywood Boulevard's a dump. For my neighbor, you know, it's a dump. Um, we've been talking about with, with um, Monica, showing pictures of, of the homeless in, in, in our neighborhood. I'm not here to complain. Everybody, I can, we're all good about complaining. I'm really here to offer um, ideas and input and my help in getting this fixed. Um, the last three years have seen my business in Hollywood decline by 40%. I can't pay my rent. I can't pay my taxes. It's absurd. Every one of my restaurants, I have eight restaurants, all of them are up. Hollywood Boulevard is down 40%. This is crazy. My restaurant's considered one of the top restaurants in the city, one of the top restaurants in Mexico, even in the country. Um, Homeless, homelessness is a problem, but so are the ordinances being put into place. More than a complaint, I'm really here to seek action and offer uh, to seek and offer action and help. I'd like to propose that we focus on ordinances, amendments, special districts, and strategies that start and fix things rather than stop things. An example is the councilman's um, strategy on, or the ordinance of stopping commerce on the sidewalk. While that might have had a good intent, it caused us two huge problems. One is A-frames. For the longest time, I couldn't have my A-frame on the street. The sign Gestapo came out and took my A-frame. Something that is a reasonable standard along any street in the world for restaurants to be able to market their specials. Go up and down Third Street between La Cienega and Fairfax and see what an amazingly bright and fabulous street it is. And we've turned Hollywood Boulevard into the opposite of that. I think we need to make it attractive for, for businesses and credible and good businesses to locate to Hollywood and appeal to residents and tourists alike. But one of the things that Monica and I were talking about the other day was we're going to get the tourists. They're going to come no matter what. Every day in my restaurant, I have people from all over the world. The one thing that I no longer have is the residents. Now, I don't know about you that, that have businesses, but Great for the tourists, and great for they come today and they'll come back again in 20 years. But I'm much happier when somebody comes today and comes back next week. That's the business that pays my rent. That's the business that pays my taxes. We've abandoned those people. I lost two major Christmas parties this year 
because people did not feel safe. Monica, the last time you came to my restaurant, you said to me that you did not feel safe walking from the parking lot to my restaurant. Now again, I gambled on Hollywood, but I thought Hollywood would be, would be great. But I think we need to learn from other places. When we had our riots here, <coughs> and the mayor and the councilman and Charlie Beck all came to my, my restaurant for a photo op and said, everything's okay in Hollywood. The next day we were back to being a dump. We need to learn from people. The first thing I said to the police chief is, let's go to New York. Let's learn from Danny Meyer. Danny Meyer, who's a, really, a renowned restaurateur in New York, who got together with merchants and businesses of Union Square and turned it from a dumpy neighborhood into one of the greatest neighborhoods in, in, in New York. Let's do that with Hollywood. Let's start different strategies, a, a, a retail strategy that brings higher end retailers and great restaurants to Hollywood, an entertainment strategy uh, that, that would also bring in, uh, or rather a hospitality strategy that would attract great restaurants. You know, Hollywood Boulevard is one of the grand avenues of the world, or so people think. But you can't do it with a rusty mullet in a, this place and that place. And people that when they walk out, all they are is trashed. I'm the first person to want to sell drinks to people. But we don't need to, 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 we need to be appealing to the musos and to me and to the Moses of the world. So that when people come to Hollywood Boulevard, we deliver on the idea of this being a great neighborhood. It's not, it's a dump. And we've allowed it to go into a dump because the attitude in the city and the attitude by everybody around us is you can't, you can't, you can't. You can't have sidewalk dining. This is the best weather in the world. Go to Paris and people are eating on the sidewalk when it's 40 degrees. Why don't we have sidewalk dining all the way up and down our street? It's crazy. Musa, you guys should have, you know, you should have sidewalk dining. It's crazy that, that, that we can't work with the chamber because we've got this 18 inch thing. Forget it. Let's figure out how we can do things, not how we can't do stuff. We need, an, um, um, so I said, a hospitality strategy that attracts great restaurants. We need to work with the chamber to get more sidewalk dining. We need a retail strategy that brings higher and great retailers to Hollywood Boulevard, not just bomb shops and tattoo partners. We need a parking strategy that builds a couple more lots, and then when we have lots, that they don't cost you 10 bucks for two hours. I don't know how many of you come to the Sunday Farmer's Market. I try to come virtually every Sunday. That parking lot that's right there is a magnificent parking lot. It's empty. It should be yet it's empty. They don't have, let's work with the DOT and let's get something that is a farmer's market special. We have one of the best farmer's markets in the country. I buy all of my tomatoes there. I buy all of my squash blossom there. When I walk out with big garbage bags of squash blossom, people want to take my picture. This is Hollywood Boulevard. We've let it become skip road. In the parking strategy, we need to build more affordable lots like Santa Monica and Pasadena. Let's learn from them. We need to make lots affordable and a collective valet parking up and down the street. Let's learn from Third Street. Let's have let's be able to come and have then an, an entertainment strategy that's Hollywood nights. Why not go to Musso and Frank for dinner and you go to the to the Chinese theater afterwards and you can leave your car at Musso and you can pick up your car at the theater. Or you come to Loteria, go to the Pantages, and you can leave your car in one place and pick it up in another. A well-coordinated parking strategy that allows for different day parks, that allows for different segments of, of, of the community is a can-do kind of approach. It's not this we can't do stuff. I believe we need a Hollywood entertainment uh, marketing district or something that puts us together. It says dinner in a show. The last thing I'd like to say is, is I think we need to learn from the Santa Monica Promenade. And after our discussion on the characters, I thought, why not turn the characters into ambassadors? The Santa Monica Promenade has an amazing program of ambassadors. You walk up and down the promenade, there are people dressed in, in particular outfits that say Santa Monica Ambassador. You go ask them a question, they know. They know where the restaurants are, they know where the stores are. They know how to get to the pier. They'll tell you what's going on. They know the entertainment that's going on. We need them. We have seven or eight theaters between the Pantages and and the, the, I keep calling it the product of Dolby. What can we do to turn this into truly an entertainment district and not a place just to get bottles and tattoos? That's my point. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> so with that, I'll say goodbye. Very good. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I, and I hope I can help.
Um, as I mentioned to you, you need to learn from Danny Meyer and use me to any extent that you can. I will help, I will do, I will be. You know, one of the things that I was saying to you is, I have two restaurants at the airport. You only get restaurants at the airport in today's world when the city considers you a jewel. I think I have a jewel restaurant. But my jewel restaurant is down 40%. Why? We need to turn this around. I need to be able to come into this room in two years and say my sales are up 100%. That's what we need. And we need great businesses here. I'm fully vested and I've got all my eggs in this basket. But I'm not gonna last much longer. We need to turn it around. And we need to have people that can do, can do, can do. Anyway, that's my soapbox. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Michael, Leslie joined us. So Michael, Leslie, okay. Any other public comments? Do they know who's coming? Um, I have not told anybody, but we are awaiting any moment now. Um, Catherine Zirconi and Chief Beck um, wanted to drop in and, and come in and visit for, for a little bit. So um, I think we'll just move on until they come in. Um, we'll start with approval of the minutes. We actually have two um, January and February minutes. You know, you probably haven't had a chance to take a look at it and read it. And maybe what I should do. Well, I think this is for email. Uh, okay. So okay. I have that opportunity to do it. Okay. As such, I'd like to make a motion to approve both. Okay. Do I have a second? A second. Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And any yes, abstentions? Okay, so the minutes are approved for both January and February. Um, Treasurer's report, um, Drew, I'm sorry, can here? Um, John and Mark, and it was unanimously approved. For both. Okay. Mark and Mark, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I should, I should stay. Okay. 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 Two reports. We, we deferred uh, at the last meeting the approval of the final December 31st statement and variance report because the finance committee wanted to have another run at it and have some suggestions to uh, make it more clear. So, what you have here on the white page is a line by line discussion of variances, positive and negative, for the 2014 budget. Um, and the finance committee met yesterday at the, uh, at the office. Um, so just kind of a, from a summary statement, one thing to notice in the, in the uh, gross and net assessment income, that our gross income last year was, uh, uh, we assessed out or we, we billed out at $3.495 million. And um, our actual was 3.286. What happened, or what, what we're in the midst of right now, are trying to catch up with some delinquencies, particularly in government parcels. So if you look in, under the budget assumptions, the gross assessment was 3.4 million. We pay a mandatory city fee of $34,000. That's fixed at 1% of gross. We had anticipated a 3% um, a delinquency of $104,000, which has been kind of a good conservative number uh, for the past several years. And actually, at the end of the year, we ended up with a slightly higher delinquency, another $103,000 at year end. Um, we are slowly but surely receiving money. Um, we think from the MTA, I think you have heard what happened, we'll get a lump sum check from the city clerk. We got one for $49,000 in January. We just got advice uh, to bill on another $150,000 and it takes a couple months to catch up with what that is attached to. Um, so we're hoping by the next um, board meeting to be able to have like, a comprehensive spreadsheet to see where we are with those delinquencies. We, we think we will recover those delinquencies. The only ones that we continue to be a little bit, um, you know, cautious about are the, uh, the courthouse delinquencies for the courthouse down near Bronson. They're now entering their fifth year of uh, not paying. And um, the city clerk 
did send a letter in January suggesting that they need to pay for all past four years, that there's there's no way the city clerk can unilaterally make a change in their assessment. And um, so and we've also alerted Kevin De Leon's office and Richard Bloom's office that this is a state issue and we need their assistance. The yeah, so we're, we're definitely bird dogging that. Um, uh, but the, uh, so anyways, I think, do anything else you want to say about the, the end of the year report for 2014? Actually, the, the committee took a really good look at all the, um, the various members and what the months um, with the rationale on. And um, I, I think the detail will show everybody where we're at. And all the balances tied together. Um, so it's it's a matter of just approving this. We also will go in and have these financials audited um, by our auditing firm, and then we will be reviewing the financials from April. Yeah, yeah. And, and that will be um, presented um, to the city and also the other taxpayers completed from that. So I'm looking for a motion to approve the year end statement. Leslie, thank you. Second. Thank you, Evan. So this one there's a cash report on top which shows our four different checking accounts so we are currently and then a summary statement as of February 28th and then a month a monthly statement to look at. Well, uh, one thing I'll point out here is that we did get our first assessment um, disbursement of $1.2 million in February. And uh, oh, and you see prior year assessments received, we also received $55,000. We cannot tell you what that, what that is, <laughs> but it's in the bank. Um, and one of the things also that um, RBC did, I don't know if you've noticed in some of these footnotes that um, Kennedy did, is to point out down below, for example, at this time last year, um, they're giving you a snapshot of what our total assessment was, how much had been collected at this time last year, and how much is due, just to see are we kind of on pace with the sequence by which we get the money, and as you can see, we are. And then the, um, on the far left, the current accounts receivable shows going back to 2009, which was the first year we did, how many assessments remain unpaid. And um, slowly but surely as properties are sold or as some of these um, issues are resolved, these, these amounts are, are you know, diminishing. Uh, but at some point, we're gonna have an interesting policy discussion, I think, with the finance committee. You know, at what point do you consider some of these to be bad debt or just not retrievable? Unusual for us, but this is a long lifespan for a bid. I think we have to have that discussion um, understanding what those um, very old and age um, receivables are. Yeah. Because, you know, for, from the tax, um, for the people that don't pay their taxes and we don't collect them, then um, you know, the county assessor will probably put a lien and then start a process right so you know, if it is um, just private property then there's some recourse but if it's governmental properties we have to be through what we're doing um, so any questions on the finances for February um, we are for February under budget in terms of expenses we got six or seven thousand dollars um, that we didn't get ahead but some of these were in revenue because they were uh, and just maybe um, collected in January, but you know, totally on track. Any discussion? Okay, looking for a motion, please. Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any extensions? Yesterday's meeting with the um, finance committee and the RFP and the process for work. 
assessments, <laughs> uh, so just the, the whole array of, of services that are provided to us currently by RBZ. And we um, had four firms send proposals back, one firm who, who does the financial services for the Long Beach bid, another one who has done it for the downtown center and the historic core bid, uh, then a, a, a private, not a private, but a CPA who, who specializes in nonprofit uh, services, and then RBZ, our current vendor, uh, came back as well. And the committee, which consists of Monica and Drew, Brian Johnson, and um, David Green, uh, elected to interview three of those folks. So we had the interviews yesterday, uh, and, and we brought in initially the person who did the, the Long Beach um, uh, services, and they're, they're sweet people, but not really kind of of the caliber that I think of my and then um, the firm, uh, Gersey Sch Schneider, uh, and this was actually a recommendation from Drew. Um, we were very impressed with them. Um, I was initially a little bit skeptical because I thought uh, a firm coming in who doesn't understand how business improvement districts work and are funded and um, would not maybe perhaps grasp how our assessments trickle in over time and, and the importance of tracking that. But they completely got it, and I think what we were most impressed with certainly Monica chip in, was trying to create a much more efficient system where the staff could actually access um, the software online, could generate reports, you know, could know at a moment's notice where we are on the budget, and it actually would integrate the assessment tracking, which right now is in a whole separate database with our actual month-to-month -month financials, so that as these payments come in and are paid, it actually would be reflected uh, in our cash situation. And we, right now we're we're trying to marry those two systems together. They were actually kind of horrified to hear that. So right now you guys can't access and get jail reports or anything? Like that. The way we do reports for you, if, if, um, if we want to know where we are in our landscape budget or whatever, we get a general ledger and then we create little mini Excel spreadsheets to see where we are. So I think that must be the 18th century based yeah. on the reaction <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> well, and also, I think it was surprising to show what Carrie does in Excel uh, and information that she needs, which actually should be available just through a service on the county system. Absolutely. So RBZ also came in and, 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 you know, presented a new way of doing these reports. You know, these reports have really, over time, it's kind of like the Winchester Mystery House. It's it's, they, it's just gotten bigger. You know, those big sheets we used to give you and Monica said, like, don't give us anymore. <laughs> Okay. Well, hold off on that for a second. Yeah. Okay. Um, Welcome. Yeah. We have a couple seats here. Well, thank you very much. Right. How are you? Good. Good. Good to see you. Welcome. Good to see you. Good. Good to see you. Good. 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 So Captain Zarconi called yesterday and said there was an interloper in town and so, you know, who was, could you bring him by? And I said, absolutely. We called Monica as well. So um, welcome. Well, thank you. Should we maybe go around the room so you can kind of see who's here? Sure, and that'd be great. As much time as well. <laughs> Everybody. So we'll start with Devin. Yeah, Devin Strecker, go with the bid. Jay Ann Martin and the College of Performing Arts. Mark Stevenson, Holly Lee Hyman and his church. Monica Martin, CNN Group. Abby Kaiser, Sonny, Abby and Leo, the Holly Studios building on the Boulevard. Chad Lewis, Client Financial, we're asset manager for CalPERS, 1600 Vine. Alyssa Van Green with BBB and Associates. Just Corey with the bid staff. Mark Echeverria with Moose Hole Frank Row. John Tronson with the uh, Historic Woodley Court Bungalows. Leslie Wonder of uh, the Fonda Theater. Uh, John Lyon with the Avalon. Jim Gallon with the Bit. And Michael, why don't you introduce yourself? We have four men hiding under the table. <laughs> Michael. Well, hi, it's Michael Gargano of Millennium Hollywood Project. You all know me on Pizza are going to the main house of Hollywood area, and I'm sure you know Chief Charlie Beck. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to say thank you for letting us crash your meeting. 
when the chief said he wanted to come and see what's uh, what's happening in Hollywood, um, I thought this would be a really good place to start. Um, a good opportunity to let them know all the great stuff we're doing, uh, partnership between the police department and the bid. And uh, just wanted to give an opportunity to say a couple words, and we've got to run, but uh, Chief, would you like to say Sure, it? sure. Well, first, uh, thanks for letting me talk to you. Uh, I go around the city, and I find that this year, I'll sit in place, okay? Yeah, uh, yeah, I go around the city, this year I'm trying to uh, spend more time with the captains. Uh, you know, I, they are uh, they're really my direct representative to all the, the various communities in Los Angeles, so I'm going to spend some time with them to let them know uh, my philosophy, but also to hear what they have to say. Now, he and I go way, way back, so there's, there's, uh, there's already a strong connection. And, and I have a strong connection to Hollywood, and many of you, many of you know I was a senior lead here a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And I've seen the transformation in Hollywood, and, and uh, a lot of it's because of this kind of partnership, a lot of it's because of this specific partnership. So, it's my way of saying thanks and, and uh, give you a chance to, to uh, ask me about any concerns you have and tell me that you like your captain or not. I think <laughs> uh, you know, uh, obviously uh, Pete had uh, big shoes to fill and, and uh, I thought long and hard about, you know, like, uh, replacing captains is a big deal to me. When I was a area captain uh, in a couple of different divisions and I know how hard the job is to do well. And I know how much uh, people get attached to you, you know. And so it's when I, when I pick an area, an area seal, I really, I really sweat who I, who I send. I try to match them up, or match their enthusiasm up with the community and all that. And he uh, was a good choice. It's, it's, it's always difficult to have somebody new come in, but uh, I knew he would put the, the energy in. Well, good. Yeah, I, I would like to just uh, make a comment that we, we don't like our captain. We absolutely love our captain. Um, we, it's as you can imagine for a community. It's you know you're kind of wondering who you're going to get when there's when there's a change, and that's a, we've we've had mostly good experiences, but we've had some challenges. Um, so we have come to grow quite fond of Captain Marconi uh, for a variety of reasons, but probably. The most significant one is his commitment to community policing and involving organizations like ours and listening, and telling us you know what's going on and explaining you know uh, really allowing us to be involved in, in at least the information flow that's out there and then to the extent we can make any suggestions he's more than willing to be receptive of them. He's been a wonderful partner for our our organization and, and, uh, and our our effort at. at keeping the streets safe and um, so uh, uh, just like to congratulate you on a very wise decision. Well, some of them make it easier than others. <laughs> but, but I appreciate that. I, like I said, I mean, I, I know how much it means and I know what difference it makes, you know. That it makes a huge difference. You know, being able to get people enthusiastically help is, is uh, can be very difficult, especially with all the challenges that we all have. I mean, you know, Hollywood is doing well, but it's got challenges, you know, and all of them require hard work. You know, the easy stuff got done a long time ago. Right. And you know, now, we're, now we're stuck with the truly difficult. Well, well, I should probably mention that, you know, for, for while you're here, you know, I chair the security committee for this organization, so I'm familiar with a lot of the issues that we've been Battling, you know, whether it be the, the aggressive manhandling of the street characters, or, or, um, uh, or some of the, the gang members that are coming up from from uh, other parts of town, and one of the solutions that we've identified that we would love to have as much cooperation from a variety of organizations as possible is the enforcement of, of conditional use permits, especially as it relates to these nightclub facilities. What we found is, is you know, Hollywood's got a long tradition of, of party going and clubbing for, you know, 80 some years, and, and all that's fine, but there's a couple of bad apples out there that bring, you know, consistently bring, you know, the wrong crowd. They, they throw parties for these gangbangers, and 
that's when you guys can get her out there in a war zone, you know? So we, we would love to try to get the enforcement of those CVPs. And in particular, drawn near every CVP I've seen over the last 15 years has got this 50-50 food and booze uh, requirement if it is a 47 liquor license. And I have never seen it enforced. And uh, there's a lot of our bad apples right now, our 47s, that happen to somehow get a dance and live music. And, and, and that is a mechanism where I think we can, we can shut these places down because they're consistently going to be a blight on our community. And we are working on that, you know, we, we, there's a couple that we've talked about before that are right. being investigated for exactly that right now. Great. So, Great. And I know that definitely moving forward. He was at the police commission last week, last week, and talked about about exactly this, and, uh, and described the forty seven exactly the way you described it, and said he was uh, said you were working on it then, huh? Yes. So we, says, yeah, he's had a week. So yeah. anyway, but so I know he brought it up. Correct. Uh, I know he's he's very uh, he's strong, and I think one of the you know listen in Hollywood. Everybody understands this completely, and the rest of the city not so much, you know, right. because it's a, less of an issue. Um, and so uh, I know that a couple of commissioners asked about it because they didn't really understand the, how vital it is in Hollywood. He, he was, uh, was very strong and know this, this is really important. So, you know, it's not just a, you know, not just trying to make it tough on businesses. You know, we love businesses, but we, but we also want to have businesses that are responsible. And that's what you want to do. Correct. You know, another thing I'll bring up, Chief, um, you know, just looking at even our agenda today, we're, we're, we, we went on a midnight uh, tour this last weekend. Uh, several people from the Chamber of Vibram report on that experience going out from midnight to 3 a.m. Just to kind of see what it looks like, you know, after the pumpkin turns into a princess or whatever happens. Usually we're, we're asleep at that yeah. time. <laughs> but um, it was better than it was two years ago. Um, uh, but we still have a ways to go, and I was really impressed um, by how LAPD uh, is a whole different kind of tactical approach to traffic diversion and just a very high presence. So um, we're going to report on that later, but um, just commendation on that because there's that. We specifically went up on top of the building at 2 a.m. to watch the, the, the push in the vortex of mayhem, which is Los Palmas in Hollywood. And it used to be that when everybody would come out of those clubs and there's seven in a row there, the traffic was still moving uh, a couple of years ago. And you know there'd be the confluence of people and cars and taxis and ballet and it was just a mess. And it was so much more orderly this time. But they're basically functioning as DOT out there. So we're, we're like, we saw it with our own eyes. The other thing that we're gonna be talking about today, and you know, there's just a, um, and I shared this with the board last month, and I know this will be no surprise to you, but I just want you to know that we are allies in something that we don't quite know exactly what's happening right now, but homelessness is on the increase. And we're documenting it, we count every month uh, here in, in both bids at the end of the month, and uh, our homeless count, you know, we, we could viscerally feel that it was, uh, it was a, we're noticing a more violent um, interaction, more mental illness, um, uh, so we are, we're tracking that, and you know, we're, <laughs> I'm on the LOTSA Commission. I'm, on, I'm the chair of the LOTSA Commission. We have, we have coalitions here in Hollywood. We've housed hundreds of people. Um, but there is a whole new influx of, of folks. And, um, and, and I feel like the LAPD ends up as the first responder. And have incredible empathy with what you guys are going through, dealing with people who are severely mentally ill and violent. Um, and. So I'm, I'm articulating this to let you know that we're aware this yeah. is an issue. Uh, we're we're going to be talking today about this new bill. The um, it's the, another homeless bill of rights act by Senator Lou, but it's now it's called the Right to Rest Act, which is yeah. that means street vending. And then street vending, we're going to be talking about. We've got some you know uh, strategies that are being discussed about how do we beat back that ordinance. So. Sidewalk behavior is a big issue. We just had a restaurant owner in here sharing with this board how his business is down because of people camped out on the street. So again, we're, we're your allies in trying to problem solve on this. Yeah, and Hollywood's not the only community that's seen an increase in homelessness and an increase in violence. The 
that's associated with it, you know, uh, a central division versus ground zero, and they've had a significant increase and an increase in violence. Uh, we saw that the result of that, and that, and that is uh, that is strictly because we are unable to address those conditions. Those conditions didn't exist, and that would have never occurred. And so, um, this is a hard one. to get to the, uh, the affordable housing number so we can start enforcing some of the sidewalk <coughs> regulations, you know. Uh, we're, we're trying to get uh, uh, the, the rest of the providers to, to help us with the count so that we can meet the mandate of our, of our agreement with the, the Jones settlement. And until we, you know, until we do that and or get an enforceable Ordinance, um, it's very difficult. Have, have you guys had the? Uh, I know you guys have a neighbor across here, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You guys have, have you guys had somebody coming from a uh, city attorney? We have. Yeah. Uh, not to this meeting, we had our our service trained up from like here himself came to the yeah. meeting. On the land and case issues. Yeah. yeah. Well, and we're trying. You know, I mean, just hearing that you can't do anything that doesn't help. You know, we we'll, we'll need to find out. Who of options we have. So, you know, that's what we're working on. And there, there are a couple of new ordinances in place, and hopefully, you know, the, the right to and the, the right to rest and stuff doesn't, doesn't take hold. Uh, so I, I see some, I see some movement. It's tough, though. It's, it's, it's really difficult. Well, we, we will work with you in any capacity if there's going to be any kind of citywide brainstorming. I think people are really, you know, becoming, if a, if a broader group of the community becomes frustrated, not just Skid Row, there's potentially a greater chance to mobilize them. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. Uh, I think that's what it's gonna take. It's gonna take a lot of pressure from a lot of folks. It can't just be, you know, the, it can't just be the downtown business. It, it has to be much more than that. So they're charged with both of those responsibilities. So we hope to bring back a recommendation. Yeah. Um, so there's no action for that today. Okay. Um, committee reports. Jan? Yeah. Would you like to do that? Yes. Devin and I will um, carry. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of different things happening in communication. Um, We'll start with, we had a great blogger tour recently, and Devin was there, and he's going to share. 
Sure. So we had our, um, we actually had two blogger tours recently. I think we already talked about the Hollywood Foodies blogger tour that was in February. Um, just uh, the week before last, we had the up and coming Hollywood blogger tour, which we um, branded as um, Hollywood Talent, so hashtag Hollywood Talent. Uh, we started the tour at AMDA. AMDA was uh, great enough to provide Jane Florkowski, who is the star of the musical Wicked that just ended its run at Fantasia's, actually ended its first uh, national tour run. Um, so she was there to talk to the bloggers on the on the trip about her experiences with AMDA. She's a graduate of AMDA New York, and she teaches classes here at the LA campus. So that was a real treat for everybody. We had to go up to the roof of AMDA and, and check out the whole campus from up there for its eye view. Uh, then we went over to Musicians Institute, where we met with one of their graduates, Ruben Cohen, who's a Grammy-winning um, mastering engineer. He won a Grammy for mastering the song Happy by Pharrell Williams. So he was there to talk to us um, about his experience. Um, so this whole tour scheme was how people are coming to Hollywood to learn how to make it in the industry. And we were lucky enough to have two great examples of that. Um, after that, we went to Second City and talked to a writer and producer of the current show, President Hillary, at Second City. Um, then we moved on to the record parlor where we got to see a Dutch band who was making their American debut at the record parlor before they go to South by Southwest. Um, and then we walked up the street to the Hotel Cafe and saw another band that's making their way to South by Southwest. Um, and they showed us their new room. They're opening a second room at the Hotel Cafe. Um, they're not sure when it's gonna open yet, but we got kind of a behind the scenes sneak peek of that. So it was a really successful blogger tour. There's a lot of tweets and Instagram and Facebook mentions from the bloggers. And then Marisa will be compiling all the um, coverage that, that results from that. So we'll make sure to let you know. And along that line, we're actually adding a new section of our website where it will be an archive of all links for all coverage mentioning the Hollywood entertainment district, um, either pieces that we helped coordinate or even ones that we were involved with or just ones that mentioned a bit. So that's gonna be um, appearing on the website next week. It'll make it easier for you guys to see all the coverage that we've been getting. Fabulous. Um, anything? Okay. Um, economic development, infographics, which I think we've all seen and uh, are terrific. And again, back to you, Devin. So we mail those out to all the property owners. Uh, we've had a lot of great feedback, phone calls and emails from people really complimenting us on these. A lot of people wanted to get additional copies so that they can use them. Um, we're gonna start making them available for sale um, just at a, a, a price to cover the printing costs. Um, we're gonna actually be representing at the Chambers Hollywood Expo next month, so we'll have them for sale there and property owners can contact us if they want to purchase packets. Uh, what, $4? Yeah, $4 for one piece. Right, just to cover the printing. And of course, they're on the website as a PDF or JPEG. You can download them, print them yourself, you can email them to people. Um, but if you want the kind of glossy postcard version, that's what you'll be able to buy. They're really cool. Yeah. Do, do, we, do we have an extra set? I, just, I saw Charlie today. <coughs> I know. Uh, yeah. Do you mind? What, what happens with the when we send out to the official list, whoever is on the list who's like the person who signed the petition, yeah. they get the mailing. You know, it could be someone else at HEI. Exactly. So yeah, we definitely want to make sure that it gets to people at Charlie. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I just want to mention um, on our website, we did recently hire two new bloggers. Um, they're going to each be writing two posts per month. These are people that um, came recommended from our um, PR team, Haynes & Co. They have very large social media followings and they have established blogs that have high readerships. So it's kind of a cross promotion where they'll be blogging for us and then posting it on their own blogs and their own social media. So we already have one blog up there um, from East RLA uh, about St. Patrick's Day that went up earlier before the holiday. And then another blogger, Whitney, um, eat, eat, see shop, eat, do, LA. Um, she focuses more on photography, architecture, and fashion. So her blogs will be more um, visual based. And then East RLA covers restaurants, retail events. So there'll be more um, happenings and restaurant reviews. So those will be popping up on the blog here soon. Okay, and then I think the last um, area that uh, about communications is the Hollywood Music Festival. 
So we're very excited. We've been making a lot of progress. Um, for those of you who maybe are new, um, we began to talk about this last year, and we were looking at uh, South by Southwest, the Hollywood Bridge Festival, Coachella, as examples. Um, our working group determined that the festival should, instead of reaching for a really huge model of like South by Southwest, we should do something that celebrates our existing venues, businesses, um, merchants, talent within a bid, um, that at least for the first round, we do not need to seek one major outside promoter. So the recommendations after months of brainstorming are that we, in order to create a grassroots festival that the community can support and feel part of, the goal of the first event will be to curate what is already here by packaging and promoting events at venues in downtown Hollywood over the course of four days. Um, the model would be similar to the Hollywood Fringe Festival, but with a more limited scope of partners working with the bid. The bid would not require any additional funding other than from our marketing budget and staff time. Sponsorships may be sought to help promote, promote the event. And the dates we're looking at are Thursday, November 5th of this year, 2015, through Sunday, November 8th, 2015. Um, and we're hoping that maybe the um, last day or the first day we might have a large outdoor event that would kind of um, end the celebration. We're looking at names, and I'm sure we're all going to want to talk about that at some point. Um, Haynes and Company is working on that right now, what we would call this. Um, the next working group is April 2nd, 2015, and we're going to talk about that with Haynes. Um, I think you go first. What, second, first yeah, or second? Second. Yeah, it's wrong on each other. Um, our recommendation is that we get the board's blessing. I don't think we need an approval, but uh, the blessing to move forward. And um, Carrie and Devin wrote up some lovely, very well articulated points why this festival is such um, a terrific mission for us to vote to support. The festival celebrates bright spots in the bid. The festival encourages micro neighborhood vibrancy. It drives, it will drive business to existing venues. It encourages pedestrian activity in the bid and it celebrates what is authentic about Hollywood. So we're really thrilled with um, jumping in and working on this and we look forward to all of your input. Anybody have any comments on that? I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah, it's just terrific. It's exactly what we should be doing that helps support Hollywood. We have 